This is Steve Whitty uh, again with another um, video. This one is again continuing January finds. This one's focusing on the vinyl. Now uh, this may st stretch into another another part, so I've got a little bit. Mostly it's, it's cheap stuff, nothing um, too fancy. So, so without further ado, let's start. And we've got here. This is Brief Encounter by Marillion. This was a US only re uh, release uh, on the Capitol uh, label. Uh, I think it came out in 1985, 86, 86. And on here you've got a mixture of studio and live tracks. You've got L uh, Lady Nida, Freaks, Kaylee, Fugazi, and Script for Justice Tear. In fact, it might be a mini live album. Sort of like to sort of like. Um, show off the fact that band band were at their peak in the UK with Fish and there was obviously try, making out try and break America at the time. Next album. This is Motorhead's debut album. This is as the label says in white vinyl. Um very pleased to pick up this. This did cost me ten pounds and the reason is normally this would cost a lot more, but the sleeves quite badly beat, beat up on this. Um, so say it's on the Chiswick label, and you've got here obviously Mathead, um, Iron Horse, Born to Lose, another staple of the song. Uh, they do a version of Train Keeps a Rolling, um, produced by Speedy King, uh, Speedy Keen, sorry, for our, um, from the Clap Newman. So, yeah, I was, uh, that sort of helped. It was, it was a hole in, in the um, Mount Red collection I was looking to, to fill, so I was pleased to pick that up. White Snake Come and Get It, released in 1981. I think this is the band's fourth album. Um, still riding across the wave. Um, um, I had some chart success with um, Don't Break My Heart Again and Would I Lie to You. Um, Child of Babylon has another, another favourite track on here. This is sort of like, to me, represents the peak of the lineup that featured Ian Pace and Neil Murray. Um, I think I mentioned when I showed Saints and Sinners. At that point, people started to go. They were get, getting successful, but the money wasn't coming in. People weren't seeing the money, and I think that sort of like um, pissed a lot of people off, and so hence th th that lineup broke broke up. This album I'd seen in the shop for quite a while and I decided to take the plunge. This is Chicago, I might as well show the back. It's Chicago and it's Chicago Transit Authority album. Excuse the glare off, off the and double art it's a double album debut. And I was absolutely just blown away by this. Um It's so it was a million miles away from what the band has become. And then you know, and I know a lot of people like that. But when I sort of like listen, listen to, and I listen to Terry Cass guitar playing, and it's just it, at times he's on a par with um, with Hendrix. Some of it, uh, you know, maybe that may be a bit of a um, raw, a, a bit of a, a, a statement to make. But it's just an absolutely blame great album. If you've not listened to this, I'd suggest you check it out. And she can't get it. I was listening to that on streaming um, a couple of days ago, and you just think, wow, what mate, great record. The Damned, the Black Album. This is a double al double album, three side studio, um, and one live album. Um, on the Chizik, came out in 1980. Sort of shift in direction of the band, very d darker, gothier. Um, so, so to speak, I suppose. I'm trying to think which songs on here that would be the what. I know side three is taken up. By the song Curtain Court, which is about 18 minutes long. Um, yeah, just History of the World Part 1. It's probably maybe a well known song on here. It's just a really good, I think, a really good, good album. It's worth, worth checking out if you've not heard it. You know, I've been a fan of, of the comps. I finally got myself a copy of this. You can all join in. 
Um, this is probably the mother of all Ireland comps. This is a 90, mid 80s reissue. Um, it's on the um, the Blue Island label, so this say it's an eight, an 80s reissue. Um, but pleased to have it all the same. Um, you've got the cover people at the band who are in at the time. So you've got a mixture. You know, Jeff Rotel, Spooky Two Three. Uh, trafficker in, in on here, Spencer Davis group on here, um, John Martin's here, Fairport Convention, you know, they meet me on the meet on the ledge she's there. The original Nirvana's on here. Um as I say it's the mother of all comps and then you've got the other comps that followed afterwards. Budgie and this is um I hope I'm pronounced this Bandelier. Um this came out in seventy five um, I got this pretty cheap because there is a bit of a scratch on here. Um, normally, budgie albums are quite quite expensive, um, but I've got the CD. Anyhow, I've got a CD box set of three albums they, that, that came out a couple of years ago. But yeah, I do do enjoy this album. Um, budgie's always worth picking up. They were a bit different from the rock bands at the time. They weren't quite heavy metal, but they did have that following. So pleased to find this. This is. Atomic, a soundtrack by Mogwai. Now, I'm aware of Mogwai, but I've never actually got around to owning any of the stuff. Double album. Um, it's basically two or three. It's, and it, it just flew by this album, listening to it. Let's open the... Yeah. I really do like the, the art, artwork on this. So, yeah, really pleased. It flew by listening to this album. It's not... It's, it's so it's from the film Atomic. I've never heard the film, so I'm not sure where I would go out and check it. I'm not a great film buff. So when I showed this, I know Steve Carson's okay, forever going on to me that I'll need to get hold of a copy of this. Stiff Little Fingers, Iflammable Material. This is a reissue, uh, not an original issue. The original um, just had it, just had the plat the red cover. Um, what the reissue did, if I show you, if you can see, you can just see, they got the flight, the flight, the flying from the album sleeve. They added that on. Um, quite an important album for Rough Trade actually, because it made the top thirty. It made it charted. It was the, I think, one of the first albums they had that charted. From that, Stiff Little Fingers came and jo um, signed for Chrysalis, major label. And you know, obviously, the track listing, Suspect Device. Um, Alternative Ulster, great version of Johnny Was on here. Barb White Love, just a great album. And this is such great nick. Another album that I was so pleased to find. Um, this is Saints, Eternally Yours. I think this is, might have been from 1978. Um, yeah, a follow up to I'm Stranded. Um, songs was just good on there. Uh, I enjoy it, enjoyed it. Uh, that back is sort of like the link to Australian punk rock there. 12 inch single that I've had, uh, I used to have and I found Rush Live, um, Tom Sawyer, Red Brachetta, Passage to Bangkok. This actually charted in the UK in 81, the top, top 30 for, for, for the band. Um, I saw them on that tour, so it was great. Um, Psychedelic First Talk 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 released in 1981 as I said when I posted it on Facebook it's got the proper version of Pretty in Pink one of that rubbish that went with the film um, it's edition it's still got the poster um, it's just an album I, album I love it's got um, Pretty in Pink Dumb White is the opening track um, I want to sleep with you, no tears, Mr. James, into you like a train, it goes on, so run down, all of this and nothing, she is mine. Probably their best album, in, in my opinion. Found a copy of this, The Doors um, debut. Um, it is slightly warped, um, particularly on side two. Side one plays okay, side two is a bit of an issue. I do have a reissue, I just picked this up just on the off chance that uh, it... it my my by play to ironically enough the side one that does play sounds better than the reissue in two thousand and fifteen so 
it's what it's one of those i suppose you know i just think well am i worth buying these reissues but hey pet shop boys west end girls um debut single this came out initially in 85 and um went top at number one in the uk charts in 1986 i have actually heard because this wasn't the original version of this they did rec ish, um put out west end girls on an epic and i have heard that version it's a it's actually totally different to what finally came out um but it's worth well checking out Stones, Rolling Stones, Some Girls, probably one of my favourite Rolling Stones albums. Very much a Mick album. Came out in 78. It's got, obviously, Miss You, Respectable, Some Girls I Love, Beast of Burden, Shattered. Do a fair version of Just My Imagination. Um, yeah, When the Whip Comes Down. Yeah, it's just, I just, I, I think it's a complete album for them. And I do enjoy listening to that album. That's just a 12 inch single I found. Another album I found, I was very pleased to find. This is UFO Space Metal. Now, this came out in 1976, and this is basically a comp of the pre Michael Schenker uh, years. So, this is when Mick Bolton was in the band. Um, it's a band, and I think that to, to, is Mick Bolton. Um, and it says it's from the it's it's it runs up the track for albums from UFO One Flying and UFO Live. So fair mixture. He's actually I've never listened to this era of UFO before. I thought well, I wouldn't say dismissed it, but you've always thought that's the the era with Michael Michael Schenker's the one to con, uh, to concentrate on. It's actually quite a pleasant surprise. There's some really good stuff on there. It's worth checking out. Well, probably big charity shop for shop find for the month was the Water Boys. This is the C. Covers a bit beats. I found it in Acorns in Sutton Carthorne. It cost me three pounds. Vinyl plays great. What can I say about the album? Obviously, James Griffiths was talking about Carl Wallinger um, not so long back. He plays on the album. Um, yeah, the Hole of the Moon is the obviously standout track in the in charty, but also when it got reissued, got to number two in the chart. But it's just absolutely great album. Really pleased to uh, found that. Another one of the comps that I like so much. This is this is one that was issued by Sounds um, Music Mag Paper, and it's with in, um, cut with um, a charisma. This is called Masterpiece, and you've got some. It's it's just the charisma label. It's also the pre label. And the pre-labels tend to be reggae and more the arty stuff. So I've got Gregory Isaacs, Residence, as well as Genesis and Steve Hackett, Mike Rutherford, uh, and Mighty Python are on here as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I found this for a couple of quid. This is the, mon the Monkey's debut, Meet the Monkey. Mon monkeys. Um, Um, it's on the RCA Victor label, as it was in the UK. Um, it's got the theme from the monkey and last train, train to Clarksville. Um, mixture of pop and a mixture of comedy on there. Um, but it's pleased to pick that up. Likewise, I found this just for a pound. This is headquarters, and the reason it's a pound, um, as people's want at that time, they. Um, um, wrote all over their records mainly because they took them to parties and it's both both of the monkeys albums are mono and it's got on here it's got got on here but obviously the best known track is alternate title obviously known as randy skasky in the uh, rest of the world but um Randy Skaskit, mickey Dolan said was while in the uk was watching an episode of two deafers do parts now that program was sort of like um, a precursor to what the Americans had. It, it, keep it in the family, but it was um, the cat. The main character was a guy called Alf Garnet, and his daughter married a Liverpudlian, and they were living in the same house. And he'd um, 
Well, obviously, as it used that term of insult, it used to call him a Randy Skowski, and Gits quite mm. was at that point quite an offensive term. So the BBC said you can't call it that. So hence why it's known as alternate title. You couldn't think of another title. Found this Saxon. Uh, this is their third album, Strong Arm of the Law. I used to have this as cassette years ago. Um, gatefold here. It's an original and it's got Heavy Metal Thunder, Helen Back again, Strong Arm of the Law, Take Your Chances, 20,000 Feet, Hungry Years, Six Form Girls, Dallas 1 p.m. It also, I didn't notice it until I actually put the record away. It also came, I think this must be a patch which you iron onto your jacket, denim jacket. That's still in there. So, uh, pleased to have that. No, I won't iron it. I ain't got a denim jacket anymore, so I ain't going to go on. Tejas from ZZ Top found this as well. I think this came out, this is a reissue. I think it came out in 76. Um, and so I haven't got enough ZZ Top and to find some, particularly I'm not really that aware pre Eliminator to be honest. Um, so to find this and then my next find, is, well, next album I'm going to show you, I was really pleased. Um, it's a triple, the days where money no object on spending on album art. And oh, we go, it's right, there we go. For a fiver, that was more than happy. And likewise, found this for a fiver as well. This is uh, De Guello. I think it came out in 79. Cheap sunglasses, probably in the tongue I knew, and that's because I saw a, a, a performance on Whistle Test, and they're performing that. Uh, yeah, another good, good album. There's your inner sleeve as well. So, pleased to find that. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop that video there so because I know how much I've got to play left. So um, I am going to do another part with showing the rest of my vinyls off. So VC, um, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Love the interaction and feel free to comment and I will always get back to you. So until the next video, which is going to be very shortly, recorded very shortly, uh, take care of yourselves. Keep spinning and more importantly, keep smiling.